<laughs> and welcome in I thought it was to the backstage pass. <laughs> and look at there. She's already on top of it. And yeah, she's wearing that designer hat and everything here uh, on the backstage pass. I'm going to call her by that nickname because I love it so much. <laughs> Uh, Brandon Morrell here, Jeff McMahon inside the Backstage Pass TGIF version. And, of course, uh, one more week to go. Uh, get that Christmas shopping done. Happy holidays to everybody out there uh, in Radio Land and Podcast Land out there, too. A countdown to CRS in Nashville, uh, February 23rd to 25th at the Omni Hotel. And, of course, we're bringing with us our good friends over at Banktail Whiskey, MitchMax.com, and, of course, Hank Jr. Productions. Been looking forward to this one for quite some time. You guys hear me say that because we do work hard to bring you the best and brightest talent in the business. And uh, we were talking before the show, and I love this nickname. And if she's going to go by that, I just have to call her that <laughs> for the show. Big Mac, Michaela Phillips, American Idol sweetheart and America's Got Talent, joins us here on the show. What's up, Michaela? Hey, the ceiling. <laughs> the ceiling. I right. didn't listen. I didn't realize that this that the name was going to be seen by everybody. I thought it was just you guys. <laughs> it's all good. I can I can call you that because you know you've got that 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 big vocally great sound. We're going to play a great uh, video today for a single that came out in 2019, Warrior, which is just a fantastic song and did real well for you. Hey, let's kind of start at the beginning. Just tell me a little bit about music and I guess the. Uh, how did you kind of know when this whole package was going to come together? Your sound, what type of artist you wanted to be? Of course, I know the reality shows you've jumped on Idol. And of course, uh, AGT had a lot to, to kind of shape that and kind of help that prolong itself. But at the same time, when did you kind of know, man, this, this is going to be the entertainment industry. This is what I want to do. Uh, pretty much the womb, I would say. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, uh, I started I started professionally singing when I was around 10 and then taking coaching and I went to a little um, little school called Hollywood Launch and it was just like a triple threat program. So they focused on singing, performance, acting, dance, guitar, songwriting, like everything you can think of. And, um, you know, I'm still working on trying to find my sound. Mm -hmm. um, but as of right now, I love what I'm doing. I've always kind of just, I've always known that the entertainment industry is what I wanted to do, is what I wanted to be in. I, I've been very confident in that this is my life and i'm very passionate about it so pretty i i would say short answer the womb the womb, <laughs> the womb. well and and the idea of finding your sound i you know i'm here in in nashville michaela where i actually i'm thinking maybe you have been here because i saw a photograph of of you with some of the love and theft boys was that somewhere else that was actually in Canyon Lake over here in California. Okay. They came okay. they came and did a show. I opened for them. Nice. Super cool guys. Super yeah, cool yeah, guys. Yeah. They invited me. They're like, hey, if you're ever in Nashville, let us know. We've got rooms. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, we're sick. here. <laughs> I wish. I want to go to Nashville. It'd be so sick. <laughs> well, so much of uh, you know, I've been banging around here for a while and and that whole search for your sound thing, I, I realize it's important, but the idea that anybody is going to find their sound with their first recordings as if Elton John and Tim McGraw and Sheryl Crow and everybody didn't evolve from those first records, yeah. you know, to the end. I mean, everybody, everybody does that. I mean, as soon as you find it, you're searching for something different. Yeah. So Yeah. I mean, so Taylor Swift is a really, Taylor Swift is a really big example of that because she yeah. started out with country and then switched to pop music. And it's mm -hmm. like, so yep. If she can do it, I can do it. <laughs> hey, take me back to those those competitions because I love I love watching it. You never know what type of talent's going to come off of there too. At the same time, Idol and AGT, and of course now you've got the Voice and all these competitions. Um, I, I guess the decision making, of course, and how far you guys went. And of course, last year they bring some of the the I guess the veterans back who'd been in the competition before, put them up against the the latest round of contestants who were in it to to go last year. What's all that kind of been jumping like jumping through all these hoops, but also too at the same time. The, the, I love those shows because they can give an artist a chance who may not otherwise have have a chance. Yeah. Um, where do I even begin? Uh, well, first of all, last year on American Idol was crazy. Mm -hmm. but by far, definitely one of the crazier seasons. I mean, we got completely shut down and had to do it from home. Yeah. What? I mean, <laughs> it's got over 18 million viewers and they're basically just watching my Instagram covers, but on national television. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that, that year was crazy. Um, I feel like I want to take it like back, back and like tell you guys the, the, the story. Mm -hmm. um, so I was supposed to go on American Idol first. 
Mm-hmm. I was supposed to go on American Idol first. I auditioned. Um, I was supposed to turn a certain age by a certain time. There's like a limit. There's like a cutoff. Right. And I missed it by two weeks. So it's all the same producers. And they basically just said, we don't want to not put you on a show. So we're going to move you from American Idol to America's Got Talent. And that's okay. how I got on America's Got Talent, which are two vastly different shows. Yeah. <laughs> two very, very different shows. I mean, I... I, mean, I always wanted to be on America's Got Talent, too. It was kind of just whatever door opened first. Um, but American Idol was definitely the dream. So then after America's Got Talent, they said it was like a year later, and they were like, okay, come back. Come back. Come to American <laughs> Idol now. I was like, sweet. Um, America's Got Talent's tough, though, because, I mean, you've got singing dogs and shit on there. Yeah. yeah. So, it's <laughs> so I'm like, and the dog's freaking cute, so everybody wants to vote for the dog. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? But, but they're both they're both really good shows. Um, American Idol. They were both really crazy experiences too. Both very different. I like that. Well, That's how cool. are they how are they the same or different musically? Because I my perception from watching your performances, I I almost preferred you know your performances on America's Got Talent because they felt more honest you know they you know you really didn't, you didn't have all the, well you 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 don't have all the distractions of of the band and the 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 much more significant production i'm it's easier to kind of focus on you and not get lost in all the pomp and circumstance that you're not going to necessarily recreate the first time you go open for somebody yeah. the next weekend um but I mean, I, I don't know if that's true. That's just from looking from looking from the outside. Yeah. Um, it it seems like it's it's uh, a little purer from your performance standpoint. But I don't know if that's true. Um, I would definitely say no on that one. Really? <laughs> um, okay. I had a I had a lot more freedom on American Idol to mm-hmm. kind of show really who I was. Okay. Uh, what was on America's Got Talent? Of course, it was it was me, but I was also you know 15, 16 years old, so it was really different. Still finding myself, still finding my genre, still right. you know all of that. Um, I I really didn't have much of a choice on what I wanted to do on America's Got Talent. Warrior was pretty much the only song that I I chose. Okay. Um, every other song was given to me. Uh, issues is I did I did issues Julia Michaels mm-hmm. and that performance and that whole experience just with that song still haunts me to this day. That mm-hmm. whole thing I did not. They they wanted me. They gave me their list of songs, and they said, "Okay, send us a list of the songs that you absolutely do not want to sing." send us a list of the songs that you do want to sing. And I quite literally, I might still have it, put issues at the very, very top of the no Mm -hmm. list with exclamation points like, don't, please don't make me sing this. And they chose that song because they thought it would be like a challenge for me. They were like, Mm -hmm. oh, challenge you, you know, this is a good, it's a good song and it will help you kind of connect and whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm going to get voted off because Mm -hmm. this, I don't want to, I don't connect to this. This is not a song that I want to sing. So they basically screwed me and um, I, it, it went fine. I, I still can't watch that video. Can't watch it. <laughs> bothers me. But um, I definitely had way more freedom on American Idol mm-hmm. to really show who I was. Right. And, and really, I was able to vocally do whatever I wanted on American Idol as well. Like on America's Got Talent, I would go into the coaching and, and they would just coach the crap out of me and mm-hmm. be like, oh, don't do this with your voice. Don't over sing. Don't blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, dude, you got to let I would have gone a lot further if they would have let me do what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And that's right. That sounds conceited and that sounds bad, but um, if I had the freedom to really, really show my voice and what I can do in my own uh, self-production, mm-hmm. I probably would have gone a lot further. But yeah, so, way more yeah. freedom on the other one. So so recognizing that you are so much freer with your own choices and you're trying to find your sound, um, you know, Demi Lovato shows up a lot, you know, yeah. in, your, in the songs that you've got. But also, you, I have ra- I've racked up your plays for your audition with Who's Loving You. <laughs> that's if you're watching that spike, that's me. Oh my um, gosh, thank you. Um, but you've also got Miranda Lambert in there, 
So, <laughs> yeah. so, so what, what is it that you think you are targeting musically? What do you want to try to do? I'm definitely more of an R and B pop singer. Mm-hmm. I love R and B like SZA, Kehlani, um, you know, Summer Walker, things like that. I, I love R and B music. I always have, um, that's kind of the genre that I want to go for, but I like playing around with all the different genres. I I'm, I'm really thankful and blessed to have the gift that I have. Cause I can, I can do all of the different genres and really play around with it and see what I like. Um, and the, the Miranda Lambert song was for my mom. I did that song for my mom. She, she loves that song. I was like, mom, I don't want to sing country. I don't want to sing country. Don't <laughs> let me sing country. And she's like, you're going to sing country because I like the song. No, I'm kidding. But I, I did it for her. But um, definitely R&B. R&B pop is more my vibe. I love that too. And, and I think you showcased a lot of different things. The song choices, the wardrobe. I mean, going into a competition like that, and of course, hearing uh, everybody in the media talk about it, and of course, Ryan Seacrest, the people behind the scenes, and of course, the, the great uh, contestants we've had here on this show before who talk about that. They always say, the real work begins when you get off a platform like that. Is, is that true? Oh my God. You're preaching to the choir. Uh, the, all the momentum goes away. Everything dies down. People mm-hmm. don't really care about you anymore because you're not on the TV. Um, that, that is, that's so true. That's really when the work begins. Doing those shows is easy. Yeah. That's easy. It's taking care of your career afterward. That's hard. Hard part too. <laughs> Well, it's yeah. <laughs> uh, songs like this that uh, put her on top. In my mind, of course, I'd voted uh, on the uh, the app. And, of course, every way you could vote that season. I think I was probably her biggest fan, Jeff, on that show. Because <laughs> I always said she was going to take this and take this. And, honestly, you know what? She's done pretty well for herself, no doubt. But that competition is just a great platform. We're going to play it now. It's a great song. It's called Warrior here on the Backstage Passing. And thanks to uh, Mitch Max and Hank Jr. Productions and, of course, Bangtail Whiskey. More from those sponsors coming up. But first, it's Michaela Phillips, and it's Warrior. Here it is on the Backstage Pass, and uh, stay tuned. Here it is. This is a story that I've never told. I gotta get this off my chest to let it go I need to take back the lie inside you stole You're a criminal And you steal like you're broke All the pain and the truth I wear like a battle wound
Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. That's one of the best songs in entertainment right now, hands down. I put that on the playlist when it came out in 2019 and have not ever turned that song off. I think that's something we drive to, aspire to be every day is, is, is Warriors, no doubt about that, in any aspect of life. Back here, Jeff McMahon, uh, Brandon Morell inside the uh, backstage pass. Thanks to Mitch Max and, of course, our good friends at Fangtail uh, Whiskey and, of course, Hank Jr. Productions. Uh, let me ask you this. When you acquired that, of course, and, and, and were able to record that, I felt the power in your voice. I felt a lot of everything, just the lyrics, the instrumentation. Um, you put out just a great song in general, and just in music, Thank no you. matter what genre it is. Um, I know you felt good recording it. The, the lyricism was great. Um, and, and in that one, there's so much meaning to it. Talk to me about everything Warrior. Man. Um, well, the first time I ever heard it, I was working with my vocal coach. And she was like, I mean, we spent, we must have spent hours my dove. I have a dove and she's squeaking. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, she's like, eh. uh, we were working on it. We must have spent hours trying to find a song. And then she looks at me and she's like, I have the song. I was like, okay, we've said that about like 10 songs, but <laughs> I'll hear it. She's like, no, I have the song. And I heard it. And I, I almost cried the first time I heard it. I mean, it's, it's just a beautiful song. The lyrics, like her, the way she sings it, there's so much emotion. It's just, it was beautiful. And I was like, yeah, this is the song. Um, and I really, my, my main goal when I sang it was for everybody to feel what I was feeling when I first heard it. Uh, but, but I wanted people to hear it with my voice, not Demi Lovato's voice. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, obviously, <laughs> that's kind of the point. <laughs> but uh, um no, it's a it's a beautiful song. I knew that that was a song immediately when I first heard it. And um, my biggest problem is has always been connecting to songs. I mean, every show, America's Got Talent and American Idol, both of them, the judges' critiques for me were always connect. You need to connect. You need to connect. I don't feel it because I always have a hard time with that. I don't like showing emotion. Right. Uh, I don't like crying in front of people. I don't like doing any of that. So if you ever see me crying on any of those shows, just know that it must have been very important to me for me to cry in front of 18 plus million people. Um, but no, beautiful song. And I just knew it was the right song. Well, so so when you did that, you're 15 turning 16. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, anybody that saw the performance recognizes that, you know, you you were very strong, very comfortable on stage as you performed. Now at 15, where, where do you, where have you gotten the experience? How do you know to try to connect to the song? You know, you're not doing like I was, which was playing 250 nights in bars when I'm 23. So yeah. where are you flexing those muscles at 13, 14, 15 years old? Um, I, I spent a lot of time in, in just like local bars in my hometown. Yeah. Um, just open mic nights, whatever. Uh, I also mentioned that I did, or I think I mentioned I did a I did a program called Hollywood launch. Um, mm -hmm. that was from when I was 10 until I think like 16, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Uh, I might've even been 17 when I was done, but, um, 
a lot of my training and a lot of my knowledge comes from that program. Um, but really it was just, it's, it's mainly just natural for me. I mean, people, I mean, somebody who wants to be a scientist, that's just how that, that's just how their brain works. You know, their brain works like they're good at math. They're good at whatever. That's just how they were born. They, it clicks for them. And that's kind of how it is for me with music. It clicks for me. And, um, I just kind of, I know how to navigate. It comes kind of naturally. I love that. It does come naturally and you're natural on stage. And just, um, and that's why I just thought you were the most natural contestant in the seasons that you were on there. And I, I'd sit across and talk to my wife and then kind of look down and look up and check the voting results and all that kind of stuff. And I said, she's the real deal. She's a powerhouse in the industry. And she's going to go you. very, very far. And, and that's not just, again, a fan of yours in general, just a fan of music overall too. You have the total package, yeah. no doubt. Thank you so hey, much. Tell me about uh, this current one, uh, which is, definitely going right down the lane you want to stay into. And you're, you mentioned you're still finding yourself as an artist, but more of that R&B kind of pop side. This really fits that lane. Lips like candy. And uh, you acquired <laughs> this one because I love it. I think it's just a great side of you. You showcase a lot of really cool things musically in it. Tell me all about that one. Oh, my gosh. Um, so we were kind of my, – my producer and my management and I were kind of trying to go for – we were going through for like a different kind of route. Um, they were like, you know, let's try something that's maybe kind of disco, like maybe something people could go to the roller rink and skate to. Um, and I, when I first heard the track, I was like, this is so it's, it's actually really, really far from something I would usually sing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, that song is like pretty, it's pretty pop, which I'm not like a huge, like pop person, even though that's what I'm singing. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I don't listen to pop music. <laughs> Um, so it was, it was pretty out of the ordinary for me, but it was just really fun. And I was like, let's try it. I was like, let's do it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And it, it ended up working. I had a lot of fun writing to it. Um, we mm -hmm. had so much fun in the studio. It's just a, it's a fun song. It's super upbeat and it it's, it's just a fun song. Tell me about the Michaela Phillips writing style. I want to know about this and what, what makes you tick? What, 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 what do you put, you know, you pour a lot into it. What, what's the best part of songwriting for you? Oh my gosh. All of my, in all of my inspiration comes to me at the weirdest times. Like I can't ever just like plan to, okay, I'm going to sit down and song, write. Like I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I have to, it, it always comes to me when I'm having a conversation with somebody. A lot of my lyrics come from conversations that I've had with people. Um, I take a lot of inspiration from other people's experiences. Cause you know, I'm only 19 and I was homeschooled my entire life. So you can imagine I probably don't have many life experiences, but um, so I take a lot from other people. But my, I would say, I don't even know. I write a lot in the shower. That's pretty much my songwriting <laughs> style. I write a lot in the shower. And some people do it while they're driving. I was listening to somebody this morning and an artist talk on one of the stations for Sirius XM. So, yep, but uh, when I'm driving, I get the weirdest thoughts. And I'm like, no, it's, that's not weird. That's about yeah. as general as you can get at, at that particular time. I mean, uh, I just got my license. I just got my license in June. <laughs> and I swear to you, every time that I drive, I turn on my voice memos on my phone. I hit record and I'll just make up random shit the entire drive <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you said i mean here you are recording all this stuff but you said quite definitively that you don't listen to pop music so what do you listen to you listen to something right yeah i i listen to mainly r&b okay so i i listen to a lot of Aaliyah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love Aaliyah. rest in peace mm -hmm. um kehlani sizza summer walker chris brown bryce oh bryce and tiller mm -hmm. Mwah. Yep. But um, yeah, ma mainly R and B. But I pretty much listen to everything. I mean, I've got country songs in my in my playlist, and I've got yeah. I've got rock and and punk and whatever. I listen to everything, but mainly R and B. I love this one too, which uh, came out I know nineteen. Uh, love left me blind. Tell me all about this one. Uh, love that song. Uh, that's my favorite song I've ever written because it was that was the first and so far only song that was like completely my story. Mm -hmm. um, it was about a boy, obviously, whatever, <laughs> stupid boys. Um, but it was, <laughs> it was about my first, my first love, my first real boyfriend. And um, he was pretty terrible. <laughs> and uh, I decided, cause I was going through it and my mom's like, She's like, you literally do music. Why aren't you writing a song about it? Why are you sitting here crying? Like, write a song. <laughs> right. I was like, you know what, mom? You're right. I'm going to write a freaking banger. 
And I sat in my room for hours there. I have the original paper and there's like tear stains on it. Um, <laughs> pretty ridiculous. But that's my favorite song I've ever written. It was completely 100% me, which okay. is what I'm, I'm thankful for. Because I, I don't write a lot of songs like that. I write about other people's experiences. So it's, it's cool to have one that's completely me. You know, one thing, I, back to the competitions too. Well, you're, you reminded me so much of just getting on stage. And I mentioned that total package thing. But man, you were confident in what you did, what you wore, your appearance, the beauty that you have. And also, uh, like I said, when you sang, it was just angelic. It was just beautiful. Thank you. Very confident artist. And I'm going to say that just because I I mean, I like to think that Jeff and I host this show. We do a music show so we know kind of on point what we're talking about. And you just had that confidence. It's just the aura of it. But tell me about this. What's kind of the best part of the music industry? And then kind of the flip side of the coin, what's been the most or is the most challenging for the music industry? Oh, I could tell you right off the bat, the most challenging part of the music industry is social media. <laughs> <laughs> so and I don't even know if that counts as the music industry, but so far that has been the one thing that is just a hurdle for me. I, I don't like being on my phone. I mean, I, and when I'm at home, I'm with my family, I'm, I like to be present. I hate being on my phone. Uh, my parents, my parents asked me one time, they were like, they're like, yeah, right. You're a teenager. Like if you, if you had the choice to have no phone and have a phone, which, which one would you choose? You'd probably choose the phone, huh? And I was like, absolutely not. And I actually, I lost my, or I didn't lose it. I got my phone stolen at Six Flags a few months ago. Wow. And that was the best three days of my entire <laughs> life. I didn't have to talk to anybody pick up any phone calls, look at any emails. I didn't have to go on social media and see all the fakery. <laughs> it was so nice. I slept. <laughs> I slept like a freaking baby. Um, but no, definitely social media. That's a huge hurdle. Lots of um, mental health issues definitely come mm -hmm. with it. Um, which sucks. It's just, it's really fake. I don't like that it's such a prominent part of the industry because I mean, nobody looks at newspapers anymore. You know, mm -hmm. nobody's going out on the street and selling their CDs. Nobody does that anymore. So it's like social media is the one thing we have to get our names out there. And it's hard. It's really hard. But I think the best part of the music industry the best part is also the social media at the same time, mm -hmm. because I've connected with so many different artists and um, just the connections I've made in the music industry. Mm -hmm. That's the best part because it's so cool to know, especially doing these shows. It's so cool to know that all of these people, we're all going to grow up in the industry together. We're all going to come up together, which is so cool. Like imagine 10 years, five years, 10 years down the line. Sure all of these people that I did this show with, we're all at the Grammys together partying, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like how cool is that? <laughs> so that's that I would say social, social media in general is the best mm -hmm. and worst part of the industry. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I played, uh, played piano every day when I was in college and I'm so glad that I didn't have my phone every day because <laughs> yeah. all of my fraternity brothers, all my friends we were all singing and playing and yeah, but for just one day, I would have loved to have had a phone to capture all that that was going on. All the on, memories, you yeah. Know, because we would be able to to share all that now. And um, but to your point, I mean, if you you get to connect with also, it's a way to, for your fans to connect with you and know what's going on. But if you respond, it means something really important. If you don't respond, <laughs> it means something really important. Yeah. And, and, and it's just like, uh, it's a click, guys. It's a click. Yep. You know, it's yeah. not that much. There's no, so, yeah, no, it, yeah. I agree. Tell me, tell me about this too, Michaela. Uh, again, Michaela Phillips here on the backstage pass. Uh, tell me about uh, the goals now moving into, okay, this year's gone. We're a couple of weeks out from closing it and, and shutting the door next year. New music. Uh, I guess what, what much as much as you can let the cat out of the bag touring live shows tell me what's going on inside your head as far as 2022 and what you want to accomplish going into next year um i have a lot that i want to accomplish i mean the main thing right now is releasing music uh i've been in the studio a lot i don't i, I haven't really been playing live much anymore just because i'm focused on writing and and finishing the production of these songs um my main goal for the year my main goal is to get a record deal 
that's the goal. I've been working on it pretty hard the past like two years. Um, man, is it a process. It is yeah. a process, but I've got a couple, couple places lined up that we're going to be pitching to. And, um, hopefully I get signed and I can start touring. Ooh, man. I'm, I'm going, Jeff. We got to get a ticket to that show. I'm, I'm going to be there. Like I said, <laughs> row with her and holding up that sign. Number one fan is all the people yeah. used to do with Taylor Swift when she started touring out there too, at the same time too. Cause, cause I'm going to say this live on the show. She's a powerhouse vocalist. I've said that many times and superstar in the making. And still, you, you mentioned that too, 19, I still think you're very mature past way past your age too. That's another Thank you. aspect that I've seen on the shows that have brought the best out in you and yourself too, at the same time. All right, we'll get into a little rapid fire. We love doing this. Uh, Michaela, we get to know you a little bit more here on the show. No right or wrong answers. We just enjoy doing this and kind of throwing some things around here, which is good. All right. Um, I know there's not many game shows on TV. And of course I knew I grew up with some of the, the I guess the, the classic ones like the family feud and the hundred thousand dollar pyramid and, my favorite of all time. I'd love to be a contestant on there one day. Press your luck, which is really good now. I've never um, heard of that one. It's that one with the whammy. It goes on TV, which they get the four whammies. It's on ABC. It's, I loved it. It was an old show. and it, it's coming Michaela, back he he makes this stuff up as he goes along. <laughs> oh, are you shitting? Are you... <laughs> I'm like, what? I've never heard that one. No, it is a game show. It is a game show. Oh, it is? Yeah. But it if, is? If, yeah. if you could be a contestant on anything out there, Price is Right, Wheel of Fortune, whatever, Jeopardy, what would you pick? Oh gosh, um, 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 um. Well, definitely not Squid Game. Luckily, that's not real. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> thank God that's not a real show. Um. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't even know. Probably, because uh, I don't watch game shows. I'm just gonna. Say, I'm just gonna say. Uh, what's the one with the with the questions? Is that Wheel of Fortune? They yeah. do have questions, or we could say Jeopardy. Jeopardy's got the categories and the little questions. That yeah, come out, which is probably there. probably that. Okay, I like that too, which is good. And most people have said like a family feud because they want to you know get along with their get to know their family more on the personal side. Oh, dude. you know what? There was a show. There was a show a long time ago, like early two thousands. I want to say. Um, I think it was called. Oh, frick! I forgot what it was called. <laughs> it was like Truth, Truth or something, and basically you had to tell. It would ask you questions. You would take like a lie detector test mm -hmm. and it would ask you questions and then you have to answer completely truthfully. And if it catches you in a lie, you lose all the money. So, the, so you like go up levels that show. I would have loved no. to be on that show. I have no <laughs> secrets. I have zero secrets. I tell the truth all the time. I would win like this. All right. Well, now, hang ahead. on. Hang go on. All right. If she tells the truth all the time, Brandon, I want to let you know something that I learned that I didn't know. All right. Did do you know where chocolate comes from? Yeah, it comes from a like a nut. Comes from it comes from apple seeds. You you have to put the you apple better seeds. Stop. To... You better stop. <laughs> you better stop right now because I know what you're quoting right now. You better stop, my friend. My friend. Uh, it was either my brother or my friend goes. No, that's how you make cyanide. <laughs> I was like sick. Definitely telling my followers false information, and they're probably gonna die. Because <laughs> she doesn't lie, Brandon. Oh well, she she's <laughs> never. On the show oh. today. All right, uh, let's do this one. Uh, food wise, uh, what do you like to cook? If you like to cook or, or take out, what what do you enjoy the most? Uh, I love to cook pasta. Pasta is my jam. Yeah. Okay. Um, I make the noodles completely fresh, homemade. I make everything everything fresh. Um, love pasta. I make the best Alfredo you'll ever eat. Quote me on that. Okay. If I ever then... see you guys, I will bring it. I will literally make it and bring it to you. Bring it it's to delicious. Me. Um, my favorite, my favorite thing to eat, I would have to say is either my mom's chicken tacos or uh filet Ooh. mignon. Ooh. Mashed potatoes are my favorite food of all time though. I can't go wrong with that. And of course, that's uh, when I'm in the mood for a good steak, man. A good side of mashed potatoes have to be there with the uh, the, the gravy from the steak or the au oh, sauce yeah. or whatever there, or the A1 steak, whatever it is. It's filet mignon. Oh, is my yeah. Favorite, uh, oh, yeah. And then my favorite, I think I, I'm because there's categories. You can't just, it's mm -hmm. so broad. So it my is. favorite fast food right now, my favorite fast food of all time is Del Taco. I know. Okay. Shoot me. They're good. They're good. Um, everyone, at any time I ever say that, they're like, <laughs> no, it's, good. it's all about Taco Bell. Um, no, it's not. My favorite. No, it's absolutely not. Thank it's you. Not. 
It's absolutely not. Del Taco is no. a lot better. I mean, if you've never been there, you need to try it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But uh, my favorite right now at this moment is Popeye's. Man. I love fried chicken. You can't. Uh, oh, and there's a place well. called Church Hills in Carlsbad, California. Okay. Delicious. Delicious. Try that next time I get to Cali because I went out there. But Del Taco, I did have just a couple of years ago when I was out there in the LA Rancho Cucamonga and San Diego area. We got to go to some ball games and do some stuff out there. And we pulled in and it was like, you know what? This is some of the best uh, tacos I've ever had. I'm just going to throw it out there and put it out there. Jeff, you got to try them if you're ever out in Cali. No doubt about it. All right. Yes. Uh, some other hobbies you get into when you're kind of away from music. What are they? <laughs> uh, I knit. I crochet. I read comic books and I play video games. All right. like also, <laughs> I'm weirdly really good at bowling. Ah, okay. Really good at bowling. My average is usually like 130, 150. <laughs> I'd say it's a lot better than mine because I haven't bowled in a while. So you, you, you <laughs> kick my ass in a bowling matchup if we we're going in the lanes <laughs> next to each other or sharing it. Jeff would probably, I don't know, he'd out, Jeff probably out bowl me, but I don't know. Hey, Jeff was the last just time have he bowled. to find out. Uh, it doesn't matter. I beat you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Challenge accepted. He beat me anyway. All right. It, uh, it doesn't matter. I've never bowled, but I'll still beat you. He still probably would beat me. Right. We'll have to bowl when I get to Nashville in February. We'll have to do that. Hey, give me your uh, – let's, let's say this. Phone rang tomorrow. You're a millionaire. Michaela Phillips is a millionaire. What's what's the dream car, a dream vacation? What would you do with it? Uh, dream vacation, Sicily, Italy. Okay. Dream car, Chevy Nova 64 SS, cherry red. Ooh, the color and the make and model and everything. Love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lady. Easy. She knows what she wants. I love that. Um, would you let me ask you this? Uh, any charity work would you give to any charities? Yeah, definitely. I want to actually, I've had this idea in my head since I was, I want to say like eight, eight or nine years old, but it's called, I have a bunch of different ideas. I want to start my own charity. Um, I would like to start one for firefighters. My dad's a captain firefighter. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to start one for that, whether it be helping with, PTSD or, you know, whatever. I don't really know yet, but I just know that I want to do a foundation, a charity, whatever for firefighters. And then I have another one that I've had in my head. This is the one that I've had in my head since I was like eight. I want to call it the drip foundation. And it would basically be raising money to get clean water for places that don't have clean water. Wow. Love that. Love the name for that too, no doubt. That's that, that's an awesome endeavor you would you would be doing there too, no doubt about it. Yeah, I've always wanted uh, to do it, just don't know how to start. <laughs> uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this one because I love this song. Uh, tell me about uh, "Fool Like You" because you guys put that out last year. Um, another great piece of work out there that's across all the platforms. Uh, tell me where that one came from. Uh, that is about the same boy that I wrote "Love Left Me uh, Blind" about. <laughs> uh, same same boy because I basically mm -hmm. broke. We broke up. I wrote "Love Left Me Blind." A uh, horrible breakup. I was an idiot, got back with him, and uh, <laughs> went the exact same way that it went before. Whatever. I was like 16. Uh, and then, uh, so I wrote Fool Like You, and it's basically just about uh, being just so blindly in love with someone that is ridiculous and horrible for you. <laughs> <laughs> a song we can all relate to, no doubt. And it's uh, something that is out there across all the platforms for your listening pleasure. All right, back to food, because this seems to be a good category today. You mentioned the Popeyes and, of course, Del Taco we talked about. But are you a pizza fan? If you are, Michaela's ordering a pizza just for herself. What toppings go on it? Uh, pepperoni, sausage, olives. Black or just... green? Huh? Black or green? Black. Black olives. Ooh. And then... Uh just like hella cheese and and parmesan <laughs> and yeah. sprinkle alfredo pasta <laughs> yeah. on the top of it. you just gave me an idea, an idea. I'm, doing Look that that today. I'm doing that today and i'm gonna send you guys a picture i'm right please there. do girl i will <laughs> please send me a picture i want i want to check that out too as well all right uh we'll we'll kind of end on this one but i love it uh everybody gets motivation from them from time to time uh especially movies and of course different tv shows i guess either either or pro or con side but uh everybody's got their favorite tv shows and movies for you uh what what comes to mind oh i i honestly have probably watched all of netflix at this point uh <laughs> quarantine was a, a crazy time um vampire diaries this is not in any order vampire diaries lucifer arrested development parks and rec the office um it's always sunny in philadelphia so funny that's a funny show so funny uh new girl 
movies, Phantom of the Opera, Coraline, Ratatouille. I actually had two rats um, that I just got rid of last year. Sad. Wow. But I had two rats because Ratatouille is one of my favorite movies. Hercules, uh, the Disney version, Disney's Hercules. Mm-hmm. Um, so many more. I honestly, we would be on here for another 40 minutes <laughs> if I if I kept going. <laughs> well, I know one thing. It's uh, been fun chatting with you, no doubt, today, getting to know you. And she's a superstar in the making out there in the R&B uh, pop side. You can take it for whatever you want to. But Michaela Phillips <laughs> is out there for your listening pleasure. Lips Like Candy is out there across all the uh, digital platforms, Warrior and Fool Like You, and, of course, a whole lot more uh, great songs. Hey, best of luck with 2022. First of all, let us say from the backstage pass, happy holidays to you and your family. Yes, and, you guys um, too. Thank you so much for uh, having me. You got it. Merry Christmas. And hey, come back anytime. We hope you enjoy the experience. We do. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for having me. <laughs> you got it. Michaela Phillips, uh, thanks to our sponsors. We're back next week on the show. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great weekend. Take, stay tuned.